All right, guys, check it out. Today on American Heritage Garage, we're going to tackle the brake system on this thing. Um, we're dealing with a four-wheel drum brake hydraulic system. Um, so far, initial inspection shows all the lines to be good, which is a good thing because I absolutely despise bending brake lines. Um, but it's not a big deal if we need to. Um, so we're going we're gonna to tear into the backs first, see what that's all about. Then we're going to move up to the fronts. Um, what I have planned is... Rebuilding wheel cylinders, rebuilding the master cylinder. Um, the wheel cylinders for this thing, actual replacements, are big bucks, like 70 bucks each. Uh, and for four of them, that's just pretty ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I think that's the plan. Um, fingers are crossed that everything goes well. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's dig into it. All right, so we're up under the driver's side rear wheel. Um, like I said, I got all the wheels off. I got this thing jacked up in the air. So we will uh, we'll, uh, dig into it. When I took the wheel off, I was quite surprised to find how loose and out of adjustment these are. So that um, that's kind of an indication of either somebody didn't know how to adjust these or there's an issue, so fingers are crossed. So we're gonna get the drum off and see what happens. comes off pretty easy. Uh, if anybody's familiar with drum brakes, they don't come off this easy. Well, there's problem number one, right off the bat. That's not supposed to be like that. The brake linings have separated. Drum doesn't look bad. We'll clean that up and reuse it, so that's a good thing. The uh, Everything looks pretty good in there. So this is this is bonded material. Um, basically, it's it's kept onto the the brake shoe web with adhesive, um, and that adhesive is over who knows how long. I mean, these could be original. If that's the case, this is asbestos, so uh, we're going to be pretty careful with that. Possibly even put a mask on when we're blowing stuff off in here. Uh, definitely soak up a lot of stuff with brake cleaner um, and not make a big giant mess with this stuff. So mind you, when you're working on old stuff like this, you have no idea uh, if these have been changed. I believe regulations for asbestos came in in 1978, so just, uh, just keep that in mind, guys. You don't want to be uh, breathing this stuff in. So I'm going to be, I'm gonna be pretty, uh, pretty moderate with cleaning this off. Um, and I'm going to do that real quick, get everything out of the way here, probably put a mask on and, and hose this down really good, um, just so we don't uh, suck down a whole bunch of asbestos. All right, so we got everything good and cleaned off. Um, like I said, guys, this asbestos stuff is nothing to play with. Uh, it's not worth breathing it in. I mean, just like anything else, in moderation, it probably won't hurt, but still, if you can avoid it, avoid it. So... Um, Hose it down with brake cleaner, blew it off. Most of the dust is off. The rest looks like it's caked on. Um, my assumption is, just from what I can see here, is we have uh, axle seals leaking. So, whatever. That's a bummer, too. Uh, so, we'll end up probably getting these out somehow. Looks like there's some keepers in there. And we'll take the axles out. So, let's, uh, let's get these shoes off. This is a, a bit of a different configuration from what I'm, I'm used to. Uh, it's not the conventional. You got your hold downs here. You got a return spring here. Um, these are kind of connected down here. So we'll, we'll have to kind of figure out how this is all held together. Um, I don't think my traditional tools are going to work. So we might have to break out the, uh, the, the uh, needle nose. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so these are just these are just little hooks. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but it's 
Just a little hook. Nope, still out of focus. Still out of focus. Wants to see the... Well, you'll get the point. It's a little spring and a hook, okay? So, that's what it looks like. All right, so we're gonna have to keep all this stuff together so we don't lose it. Um, again, I don't really need to take a picture because I have this, but I usually recommend taking a picture if you can. Okay, that one's out. So now, Got to figure out how this is all tied together here. Can't exactly tell what's. It almost looks like this lower piece right here holds the bottoms together. So we get this upper spring off. That looks like it's really about it. So let me run over and grab a set of pliers. Try a couple different kinds here. Got the mini mini linesman and the needle nose. Try these first. Man, that spring is hard. Try this way. Okay. Okay. There's that guy. Uh, it's cakey. It's a little bit kitty wampus, but I think we'll reuse it. Um, everything for these old brakes is crazy expensive just because they're hard to find so we got parking brake strut back here so now I got pivoting happening so now I gotta figure out how okay so we're gonna want to take this nut off if you can see that I don't know if you can see it or not yeah take this nut off and leave I'm gonna leave this parking brake strut or the uh, the lever just hang down so we'll go get a go get a whatever that is 7 16 half inch and then we'll figure out how this thing comes how this pivot comes off here does it is there a clip it doesn't hold in from the back <laughs> this is this is definitely different um, I wish I could tell you that I'm an old pro at this but this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, this style at least. Um, I've got a fair amount of practice with uh, with regular drum brakes, but these are a little different. So now my goal is just to get this axle out so we can see what the seal looks like uh, and get a number on it. So once I figure out how these come off, we'll, uh, we'll get back to it. So real quick, just wanted to show you, um, I got the shoes off. Okay, got everything off, disassembled, um, minus the wheel cylinder, but I'll get that at some point here. Uh, right now I'm going to focus on these and then the fronts um, and getting the axle out because I want to get the seals ordered. Um, so what I was fighting with was this pin, okay, and it the pin slips through and holds the shoes together okay I, I wasn't sure how the pin was retained but there's this little clip hold you up here so here's the pin okay right there and then there's a little clip okay it's got a little bit of a I'll show you here it's got a little bit of an angle to it so that pin slips over the clip and then you bend the tab down and that's what that's what retains the um the two shoes together so um yeah so we're gonna go do the fronts here real quick just so i can get those off to get the wheel seals uh and i wanted to show you up under here I was concerned, I thought that this rear end was set up like a 4 9 inch, but there's actually a cover back here. Uh, I didn't notice it because of all the junk and grease, but uh, you'll be able to take that cover and uh, the C-clips out and slide the axles out. I thought there was retainers at the end of the 
the axle tubes, but there's not. So we're going to get that done. So what we're going to do back here is remove this cover so we can take the C-clips or whatever is retaining the axles in, take them out. Okay. So we got to get this brake line out of the way because it's down over this cover. So most likely I'll end up removing the whole line. Uh, that's going to involve bending up the tabs along the axle, removing it at the block, and removing it at the wheel cylinder. So we'll start with that. Um, well, this, this has got 80 years of gunk and road grime and grease and oil. I, you can't even, I'll show you real quick, you can't even get a socket on there. So it's going to take a few minutes of just prying gunk off of here to even be able to get the socket to fit right. So each one of these is going to take, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot, it's a lot of, a lot of gunk. I mean, the one good thing I've learned over the years, if there's that much gunk, usually you're not going to have any problem getting them to come loose. So with what I just pried off right there, that's about good enough to be able to get a socket on there. Um, these are 9 16 Once I get them all cleaned off and the brake line's off, we'll hit them with an impact. I'm not worried about draining them because once I pop this cover, all the oil's going to come out. Um, one thing, tip whenever you're doing um, a manual transmission or a differential or anything that has a fill plug in a separate spot, like this would probably work, but even still, we want to make sure this will come loose. But there's a fill plug in the front. I'm going to break that loose because the last thing you would ever want, a lot of differential covers don't have plugs in them. So the last thing you would want is to drain all the fluid out and then strip out the, the plug or something like that. And then you're really screwed. So keep that in mind. Um, I am going to start working on trying to pry these tabs up without hurting anything. And then we'll... It's a mix between not slipping and stabbing myself with some old metal and having to go get a tetanus shot and not ruining this brake line. Um, it's got, I mean, it's, it's really still in pretty good shape. We'll give it the same treatment. We'll, we'll spray the PV on the fitting. Um, these are definitely not as in, in, as, in as good of shape, so we'll get those soaking real good. Uh, and then we'll hit it all real good with a wire brush like that so I'm gonna get to work on that and I'll uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get this cover off got everything cleaned up um, unfortunately the brake line at the uh, T fitting on the axle it was just starting to strip out um, it's not worth tearing it all up because it's pretty difficult to get off then so what I did was just I just cut it at each end uh, kind of flush with the fitting and I'll just take a ratchet in a socket and take the fitting out and rebend a brake line. It's not that big of a deal. Um, got all this stuff cleaned up, made sure the um, socket would go over each of them. So we'll uh, we'll run around here and knock these loose. Um, top three or so we're gonna leave in, uh, but loose so the whole pan doesn't go flying. So we'll kind of start here and work our way around. plug out and see if I can pry against the plug hole. So it's super convenient that the tank is out of here because I can basically sit Indian style underneath the car. Um, I don't have to lay down on a creeper or anything like that so that's nice. This would be um, slightly more difficult with the tank in here. Hammer time. Mallet time. Not hammer time. Knock around on it a little. And then see if I can get it to loosen up.
squeeze out a little bit more. It's really hard to see the even the distinction between the cover and the case because there's so much crap all up on this thing, but I think it's right there. That's it. Alright. Definitely some uh, some pretty heavy <laughs> heavy stuff in there. Um, a lot of people hate the smell of 90 wit. I don't mind it. I've never claimed to be normal, so let's see what we got. Our fingers are crossed that there's not a lot of metal. I can deal with gunk and a few cans of brake cleaner. I'll clean that right up. It's the, it's the metal shavings that we're concerned about. Um, this thing's probably only got like 87 horsepower though, so I'm sure it didn't tear anything up too much. Okay, so this kind of smells. Uh, <laughs> this kind of stinks. It's pretty old stuff. Uh, it appears that there's some metal in there. Um, We'll probably put a friction modifier you can see by looking this has just been sitting for a really really long time it's created a kind of a sludge line so yeah we'll we'll see what we got um, I'm gonna get let this in let this drain and then we'll uh, we'll get the see how easy it is to get the pin out of here looks pretty standard um, it's a flathead screw, that's pretty sweet. But take your screw out, your pin comes out, then you should be able to uh, keep your spider gears in line. Um, this is not, they kept this technology for quite some time. Then you're gonna have C-clips in there, push them in and out she comes. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that part here in a second and I'm gonna try and scoop some of this stuff out of here. So there's a whole lot of sludge in here, um, so I'm just going to let it drain. I cleaned some of it out. Um, like I said, we got a flathead screw here holding the pin in. Uh, it's pretty, pretty uh, tight in there, so we'll use the old impact screwdriver. I got something wedged in holding the axle so it doesn't spin. Uh, if you've never used any of the, or one of these, what you do, you put a little downward pressure and turn it the way you want it to turn. You hit the end of it with a hammer and it gives it a jolt. Let's see how that worked. Hopefully we can get it the rest of the way with just a regular screwdriver here. Looks good. what was holding my axle in. But we got the pin out. So now we'll hopefully slip this straight out. Something like that. It's loose. So that's good. I got, I got a set of ice grips. We'll just grab it real gently here. Bring it the rest of the way out. Okay, there's my pin. that out of the way Let's see if you guys can see see clips here so oops turn this whole thing by hand we don't want to lose the we want to keep the spider gears in line with the if you can avoid messing with those you'll be a lot happier so keep them 
somewhat in line. I gotta get this guy out right here, and then I'll push the axles in and let me get a magnet. So we'll get this guy out like that. Now, if we reach over and push the axles in, you'll be able to see the C-clip there. C-clip fell out, right there, C-clip. So there's one side. That's all I'm worried about right now. We'll head out and take this axle out and uh, get the seal out and check some numbers. We're up on the front brake here. Um, this is a hub brake drum assembly. So what that means is it has wheel bearings inside here. Um, that can be removed, repacked, so on and so forth. Um, it's This is kind of a thing of the past. You don't see this much anymore. Probably in the 90s at some point they stopped doing this style and moved over to the, the, uh, the whole hub assembly. But uh, pretty simple, kind of two different steps. First step is getting the, the bearing assembly and all of its accoutrement out of, uh, out of here so you can remove the drum. We'll get the seal off. Then we'll give the actual assembly inside here, the shoes and everything, the, uh, the same treatment we gave the back. So I'm going to try and do this off to the side so I stay out of the way. Uh, first step, we'll get this cap off. Um, I'm going to be kind of a little careful not to damage the cap. It usually isn't too bad when they have a nice big lip like this. Yep, that was pretty easy. So we'll set that aside. Next, we got a cotter pin in here. Uh, and usually this nut is not very tight um, It doesn't have to be you set your preload on your bearings and then back it out Boy, that's easy back it out to um, Let's see here Almost almost hand loose We're gonna set a channel locks up on here Just crack it a little bit. There we go so I Try to set everything in the order that it comes out that way. I know what how it goes back in it's just one way that I do things not to forget. So nuts off. Now we're going to shimmy this drum off and get the, the outer bearing to come out in the washer here. Let's see what we got going on here. So there we got a washer and a bearing race. A little stuck here. There we go. Then I got a bearing. So we get that all set up. Um, the next quick and easy step you can do, this has, on the inside here, it's got an axle seal and another bearing. So if you put the nut back on, this goes for pretty much any hub style brake drum or brake rotor. Um, there's going to be a seal on the inside to keep uh, grit and grime out of the grease that's inside here. Apparently I forgot how to thread things back on. Um, so what you want to do is run the nut back on a little, and you want to get this off, and you want to get that inner bearing rested right on that nut. And usually one swift, swift pull, give it a little running start, give it a yank, now you got a bearing and a seal just dangling there there's the inside of the drum here's all your different races and everything uh, these bearings are a little different they're not your standard tapered wheel bearings so we'll uh i mean they are tapered but they're just tapered differently um so we will uh get this all apart and cleaned up i'm gonna jump back to the rear there and work on getting those axles out so I can get an order in and uh, we'll be good to go. So there's our seal. Not much. Just have to uh, clean it up get a number off it. So let's jump back to the rear and we'll come back and clean these up. So real quick here, this axle should come straight out. So I'm going to pull it out.
expose my seal. Seal's right there. Let's see if we, how easy we can get that out. This thing's been in here for a while, so it's going to take some time. Basically, what we're going to do is try to pry against this back here to get the seal removed. Um, the bearings usually don't go bad. I mean, they do, but it's bathed with uh, differential fluid, 90 weight, so it's not too big of a deal. But I'm going to spend some time working on getting that seal up. Okie dokes. So... Uh, with the help of an air hammer or an air chisel, uh, a screwdriver, a regular cold chisel, and a very large pry bar, this thing's about to come out. Fingers are crossed that uh, we didn't destroy the numbers. So, one axle seal. We'll clean all this up. Looks like I didn't tear anything up around there too bad. So, big thumbs up to that. Uh, then we'll get this thing cleaned up and see if we can't find a number. Um, so for today, we got the front axle seal, the rear axle seal, and then I need to find the right size um, piece of tube, rubber hose, to go in between the filler neck and the gas tank. Um, so that's what my uh, my parts list consists of for today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get uh, hosing on this thing and scrubbing on it, see if I can't find me a number. All right, guys, there you go. Brakes are all disassembled. Um, again, if you've been following all my videos, uh, I'm making this uh, outro, if you will, end of the video compilation. I don't know what the hell you call it. Um, like a month after I did the work. Um, just trying to catch up, just trying to get back into the swing of things. Um, but the brake system on this thing was a nightmare. Um, it was a mess. So uh, it took a lot of work to get it back together. Um, Stay tuned to see what we had to do, uh, and we get it all reassembled and see if we get it working. Uh, so if you want, stick around. Um, thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing. Appreciate it. I've gotten some great comments. Um, had some people watch the video, and, or the videos, uh, and I can't believe that like 600 people watch my videos. I know that's like nothing in the world of YouTube, but to me it's like everything uh, because... It gives me like this much incentive to keep doing it and that's all I need because it's fun. So um, thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for sticking with me. And until next time, we'll see you out here at American Heritage Garage.